Welcome to the Estate Agency Affairs Board continuing professional development session. My name is Nomsam Kwena. I'm the currently um, education and training manager within the Estate Agency Affairs Board. My presentation will be about internship management and mentoring. Um, during this session, you will learn about or you will be able to understand applicable legislative requirements pertaining to real estate sector internship process and distinguish this internship process from other internship processes that are available in the market. You will also be exposed to all learning areas and projects that are required of an intern during the 12 months compulsory internship process. You will also understand the qualification and PDE requirements for interns and you will also understand the process of mentoring. Mm -hmm. You'll also be exposed to mentor-mentee relationship requirements for effective mentorship program. And we will also discuss the roles and responsibilities of parties in a mentorship and internship process. Ultimately, you will also understand the submission requirements or steps that you need to follow when you need to submit um, and confirm yourself as a completed internship program after 12 months. Okay, before I start uh, with my presentation formally, I would like to make a few introductory remarks. Um, as we all know, in 2008, on the 15th of July, we have introduced what we call education regulations, which we refer to them as standards of training for estate agents. Under these um, regulations, it was required that all people who are starting for the first time in this industry, we start them off as interns. Hence, we're having this program. So I all new entrants are required to complete compulsory 12 months internship program under the mentorship of either a principal or anyone who is appointed by the principal to become a mentor for the intern. And in the 12 months, the intern is required to complete what we call intern, um, intern logbook. And that is accompanied by what we call portfolio of evidence, or POE, as we normally refer to it in this industry. Now, this logbook became effective from the 1st of July, 2013. Prior to that, we were requiring the intern, together with the mentor or the principal, to submit to us a signed off letter to confirm that the person or the intern has completed uh, the 12 months program. But since the 1st of July 2013, we require submission of intern logbook together with the POE, porf portfolio of evidence. Now, why did we introduce um, the logbook? To ensure that the intern receive relevant, meaningful, and signed off workplace experience and to ensure that during the uh, course of the internship period, the intern is not relegated into doing um, some functions that they're not supposed to be doing, such as making tea, going to the shops, and so on and so on, which we found to be a practice within the industry. Now, the intern logbook uh, evidence is therefore cannot be compiled during w classroom training, which is currently happening, which is really illegal. I would like to emphasize this point because um, intern logbook must be completed in the workplace and not in the classroom. Intern logbook must be completed using real life workplace evidence evaluated and signed off by the mentor who is appointed by the principal if the principal is not a mentor or signed off by the principal himself or herself to confirm that the intern has been exposed to the real life workplace experience. Now let's distinguish between other graduate internship programs versus the real estate internship training. We need to note that internships exist in a wide variety of industries and professions. Internships exist even in law field, in business field, in medicine, and everywhere. And basically, the idea is to make sure that the intern gains 
relevant workplace knowledge and skills so that when they are done with the program, they are able to excel in the chosen field of learning. In the real estate profession, the internship involves a beginner or a new entrant who has never been issued with a Fidelity Fund certificate in their life um, to gain real estate experience. The program is implemented to allow the new entrant to acquire the experience in this specialized profession. We all agree that this is a specialized profession. Not everyone is able to excel unless you've been exposed and you went through the ropes. Now let's talk about regulations pertaining to mandatory internship program. The requirement is that a mentor or a principal must have held the Fidelity Fund certificate for a period of three years or more. So no one can mentor an intern unless they have held a three-year FFC. That is regulated and is not negotiable. So you cannot appoint any other person to come and mentor your intern in your um, company unless the person has met this requirement. The mentor can be nominated by the principal or the principal himself or herself can perform the role of a mentor. There must be a mentor-mentee agreement that is signed off between the parties being the mentor, the principal, and the intern. And this agreement, together with the letter of appointment, must be submitted to the EAB when you will register the intern to be issued with the Fidelity Fund certificate for the first time. The mentor will play a role, model role in the life of an intern, and they must be willing to share wisdom knowledge and coach and train this intern, providing constructive and meaningful feedback throughout the internship program. I also want to highlight the objectives of us introducing the internship again so that we emphasize this point. Now, the internship logbook is meant to facilitate and monitor the, that there was an induction of the intent in the workplace. The logbook is also implemented to ensure that the intent estate agent not only acquire meaningful practical estate agency experience during the 12 months, but is also exposed to an applied and relevant practical learning experience that is regarded as meaningful by the intent himself or herself. The intern will also be exposed to other theoretical and legislative requirements that are required in this industry. During the internship program, the intern will be provided with structured learning environment. Therefore, you as a principal or as a mentor, or even you as a mentor, you need to make sure, or as an intern, you need to make sure that you compile what we call learning pathway. Basically, that will be able to assist you to know when to do what. A learning pathway basically highlights from day one what is the intent going to be exposed to until the last month, which is month 12. The intern logbook um, has got a number of learning areas that are applicable in the workplace. And these learning areas are non-negotiable. They must be exposed to the intern throughout the program, and the principal should endeavor at all times to make sure that this intern really is exposed to those learning areas. I'll come to those learning areas in a short while. Now I'm getting to the educational requirements of an intern 
especially during the first 12 months of the internship program. Please note this slide. This is a very important slide. Probably you will get this in your exam. Um, I'm now going to focus on intern qualification requirements. I must emphasize that which I'm going to present now talks about what must be acquired during the first 12 months of an intern's life after being issued with a Fidelity Fund certificate as an intern estate agent. During the first 12 months of an internship program, the intern is required to enroll and complete a qualification called Further Education and Training Certificate in Real Estate through an accredited training provider, accredited by the services CETA, and ensure that this qualification is completed by month 12. Now, we also have interns that are bringing along other academic achievements such as BCom Marketing, BCom Accounting, or LLB. Those qualifications, we recognize them through a process that we call equivalency exemption. If you've got the intern has got those qualifications, they are allowed to access our website, EAB website, www.eab.org.za, and make sure that they acquire the procedures that are applicable for applica applying for the equivalency exemption process. Then they will be exempted from doing this compulsory qualification for interns. Now, after the 12 month period, the intern will be required to enroll and undertake what we call professional designation exam. This is a board exam. When I say it's a board exam, I mean it, uh, it is conducted by the Estate Agency Affairs Board alone. So don't confuse qualification and the board exam because that is what is normally happening. So this PDE will be undertaken by an intern that has completed the 12 months internship program and has already been either exempted or certificated against the further education and training certificate in real estate qualification. The intern cannot enroll into professional designation exam unless they've completed what we talked about, the intern logbook. The intern logbook must be submitted to the EAB, but I'll talk about submission steps as one uh, within this presentation. Kay. Should the intern fail to meet the qualification requirements within the first 12 months, that period of internship shall be extended again into another 12 months period to allow the intent to complete both the qualification and the exam. So in a nutshell, 24 months period is allowable for the intent to complete just the qualification and the PDE. However, the logbook cannot be postponed to this additional 12 months. It must be completed and submitted within the first 12 months. I'm moving into mentoring or mentorship and what it entails. Now, not everyone can become a mentor to an intern estate agent. Mentoring is a specialized skill. I'm sure we all agree. Now, what is mentorship? Mentorship is a person to a person experience and an action by a person for a person that is confidential, non-judgmental. It emphasizes on guidance, coaching and support of the mentee or the intent. It also it is also based on regulatory business and individual learning needs of the mentee. You cannot deviate from those requirements. And most importantly, a mentorship relationship is a trust 
relationship. So during the 12 months internship program, when, you, when an, a mentor is mentoring the intern, it's very important that a trust relationship is established. Mentorship is a formal and informal developmental relationship where an experienced and knowledgeable principal or men uh, men mentor or full status estate agent as nominated by the principal to act as a mentor undertakes to advise and assist the intern to meet all the requirements of the internship program, to develop necessary skills, capabilities, and capacities that are required for both personal, which is important, professional and career development by the intern. Now, in a nutshell, mentoring builds confidence and understanding, motivates the intern and the mentor, helps the retention of the newest professional, which is the intern, because we have a problem in this industry. We cannot keep the people who are joining this industry. We need to emphasize on this point because with the mentorship program, we know that it can yield good results such as retention. Mentoring also provides focus and direction, builds on expertise quickly, provides a sense of security, provides intent with effective models of practice because this is a specialized profession. Learning from someone else will, make, will actually make an intent to be more effective because they will in, in, in a way copy this experienced person and they will be able to sell through their lives as an, as an estate agent. Mentoring promotes professional lifelong learning, a platform for coll collaborative interaction. Now, what is the role of a mentor? The mentor is there to provide or give vision and insight. We have people who are joining for the first time. They don't know exactly what they're going to do with their lives in this profession. And the mentor needs to give vision and insight to this new person who still needs to learn what needs to happen in this industry. The mentor is there to support and encourage to act as a role model. It's very important that the mentor is always on point and volunteer their time. They are approachable and they are able to explain the unwritten rules. For instance, we have a, role, a code of conduct for estate agents, but you can build on that code of conduct uh, as a mentor to make sure that you transfer other attributes that are required in this industry or in this profession. Mentor, mentor's role is also to provide guidance and leadership and also help the intent to identify career opportunities. There is a wide range of opportunities in this profession. You can, as an intent, you can find yourself um, also specializing in auctioneering, commercial property, etc., etc. There is wide range of opportunities, and the mentor's role is to point the intent towards those career opportunities. The mentor's role is also to establish what we call a trust relationship throughout the program, and to develop self-confidence and self-esteem of the intent. Remember when this intent joins for the first time, they are some of them are not so sure what they are going to do. And providing positive feedback, constructive instruction, builds self-esteem and self-confidence in the life of an intern. The mentor skills or the skills that are required of a mentor are displayed. I've already, basically this was just to sum up everything that a mentor needs to bring with in order to provide effective mentorship program or training. Communication, very important. Guidance, very important. Strategy, I talked about vision, very, very important. And more importantly, you need to display leadership, inspire this intern, help and coach, and make sure that you motivate them towards um, positive performance. 
Mentorship skills model involves listening actively, building trust, encouraging, identifying current or future goals of an intern, and making sure that you build on these skills. Now, on this model, you'll see that there's mentor-specific skills, mentee-specific skills, and also shared core skills, which I just talked about. It's not only the mentor who needs to pay attention, listen, but also the mentee or the intern needs to make sure that those shared core skills are applied throughout the internship program. Now, what is the ideal roadmap for a mentorship program to work? As indicated, a mentor needs to have a clear understanding of the expectation of the mentee or of the intern in order to provide a meaningful mentorship or instruction or coaching. You need to clear, clearly communicate your expectation as a men mentor and you'll see that it's this is also applicable um, in terms of the in men mentee or the intern. So basically, in a nutshell, the mentor and the mentee must co-develop an exit strategy w against the plan that they would have developed right from the beginning. And if the, if the mentee is given feedback, they need to make sure that they incorporate that feedback that was provided by the mentor in terms of making sure that they improve on their performance. This slide just summarizes the components of an effective mentoring relationship. Listening, confidentiality, building trust, and collaboration. These are critical throughout the entire mentorship and internship process. The men mentorship techniques involve showing the intern, making sure that you play as a catalyst, as a mentor, to enable this intern to uh, actually acquire the skills and the competencies that are required. You need to, as a mentor, accompany, or as an intern, accompany your mentor every time they go somewhere to serve a client or to get a mandate, etc. You need to be there to be able to learn exactly what and how they are doing it. So my plea to mentors is that they must be available at all times for the intern. They must be patient with the intern, be sensitive and respectful. Most importantly, be flexible because sometimes a, an intern may have other experiences that are not necessarily positive towards the program, but the mentor needs to be flexible. Same as the mentee, the mentor may experience this and that throughout the process, and the intern must be flexible. The mentor should be supportive, uh, encourage self-confidence, be a good listener, and show concern, genuine concern. The duties and obligation of an intern estate agent. An intern estate agent is required to diligently complete all information required in the prescribed logbook, as already indicated, and complete all workplace tasks and projects, regularly meet with the mentor or the principal to review the practical workplace experience, ensure that the principal and the mentor signs of the logbook together with the evidence that is required in the POE so that the logbook and the POE is full, fully compliant with the requirements of the Estate Agency Affairs Board. The intern is also required, these are obligations, to serve the principal or the estate agency firm diligently, honestly, and properly. Confidentiality cannot be overemphasized. 
in this profession, we deal with various competitors and we need to keep all documents confidential. We deal with various clients and obviously this cannot be overemphasized. The intern is required to execute all lawful instructions that are given by the principal or the mentor during the internship program. And the principal is also required to make sure that they issue only lawful instruction to the intern so that they can be observed throughout the process. The intern is required or commits to undertake and undertakes to um, not to be absent from the service of a principal without consent. If you are taking leave as an intern, it's very important that you communicate upfront and agree and get an agreement from the principal and the mentor so that you don't find yourself being absent from work without reason. That causes contempt. The intern is also required to devote themselves to the business of the principal and not engage in any business whatsoever. If you are having an event planning kind of company, you need to declare upfront to the principal, even before you sign off your letter of appointment. Restrictions that are attached to the activities of an intern estate agent. An intern estate agent may not perform any act as an estate agent unless they have duly disclosed in all printing material relating to the fact that they are intern estate agents. At all times, engaging your clients as an intern, you need to indicate that you are intern within this industry. You cannot claim yourself to be a full, sta full, full status estate agent or a principal. If you are found to uh, proclaim yourself as a principal or basically acting as a principal while you are holding an FFC that says you are an intern estate agent, you shall be charged. An intern estate agent acts under active supervision and control of the principal estate agent. So you cannot, as indicated, perform any other role as an intern unless you are under the supervision of a principal estate agent or a mentor that has been appointed by the principal estate agent. In addition, you cannot, as an intern, directly or indirectly hold yourself out to someone else to, to advertise yourself as, as qualified. For instance, you have not applied for equivalency exemption, but you have an LLB. You can put that qualification on your business card. It's fine. However, you cannot put the designation for um, MPRE or PPRE on your card if you have not done or passed the PDE requirement. As indicated, the intern cannot hold himself or herself as a full status estate agent while is holding the intern fidelity fund certificate. The intern may not or shall not complete or draft any documentation relating to any transaction, even if it is negotiated by themselves. That has to be left to the mentor or the principal. I'm now moving over to the obligations of a principal or a mentor towards the intern. The mentor or the principal need to familiarize themselves with all logbook requirements. The principal or the mentor needs to regularly meet with the intern estate agents to plan workplace activities. We talked about the learning pathway earlier. So all these learning areas that are contained in the logbook, there needs to be some sort of a plan to indicate where are we starting.
which program or which learning area are we going to target first until all learning areas in the logbook are covered. The intent needs or the mentor or the principal needs to ensure that the intent estate agents is provided with the opportunity basically to learn each and every area that is contained in the logbook and signs of the logbook once all the activities have been completed by the intent estate agent. So it's very important that the intent and the mentor meet on a regular basis, preferably on a monthly basis, to track progress and to provide feedback where required, just like you do in terms of performance management system. Continuing with the obligations of a mentor or a principal towards an intern, the principal or a mentor commits and undertakes that they will use their best efforts and endeavors diligently to mentor, teach, and instruct the intern in the practice and the profession of an estate agent. And they, will, they commit to actively supervise and meticulously appraise or apprise the estate agency functions and activities of the intent from time to time and ensure that the intent accurately maintains and keeps the mandatory workplace learning program logbook or the POE which shall be signed off <coughs> at the end of the 12 month period. We are now moving to the prescribed or compulsory learning areas or workplace experiences or projects, you can call them that, that must be completed by the intern through during the program. Now, it is um, very important that these eight learning areas are completed, non-negotiable. Now, I have clustered the first uh, learning area, induction, product training, law, or legislation, basically as the first, because this first one must be completed um, at least within 30 days of the intern having issued with a Fidelity Fund certificate. But I'm going to refer to the next slide, which is quite busy. So the induction program or the program that must be completed within at least 30 days of the intent joining the firm um, should contain um, or should entail um, sharing of the company strategy and the strategic priorities, including the product mix and the target markets. And the uh, induction should cover also the org structure of the company and the all the interdependencies, including the support structures that are available for the intern. The intern should be given a proper job description and KPIs or key performance indicators that must be fulfilled during the 12 months period. And legislation should be covered within the 30 days, maximum up to three months because we have a wide range of laws and regulations that we, we as estate agents comply with. Code of conduct must be covered during the induction month. And as indicated, qualification and exam requirements must be emphasized during these 30 days to ensure that the intern ultimately enrolls um, uh, to acquire the prescribed qualification and is able to undertake the exam after 12 months period. Performance standards and customer service standards must be shared with the intern during the induction program or the induction month together with performance management system that the company follows. So in a nutshell, it's very important that you cover all legislation, including contract law and how contracts are completed, etc., during this first or during the first month. Um, 
The second area talks about legislation. So here I'm highlighting the, the types of oh, the legislation that is required to be covered during the induction month. Uh, it is very important that the intent is made aware of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Most importantly, the, the intent should be exposed to the Estate Agency Affairs Act and Share Block Control Act, Sectional Title Act, etc., etc. Just to point out, Consumer Protection Act is also very important, should be covered during the induction month together with FIC or Fi Financial Intelligence Center Act. These are very, very important. SAS requirements are also must be covered during this first month because the intern may, uh, is going to be earning something probably during the first month, we hope. And also all the employment legislation such as Skills Development, Labor Relations Act, Employment Equity Act, etc., etc. And what is the deliverable is that the intent should be able to summarize each one of this legislation and include these summaries or reports in their POE and probably to demonstrate understanding this intent should be able to present to the mentor or the principal in terms of how or to demonstrate how they understand um, these pieces of legislation. The second or the third area is strategic management function. It is very important to note that this intent is also prepared someday to become a principal. Therefore, they need to be exposed to strategic management function, how the business or strategy is, uh, has come about, the sales and marketing plan or strategy of the business, how um, stakeholders or clients are pursued or how client base has been or database has been um, has come about the finance or budget and the finance system of the business including the IT and other business administrative policies and procedures that the business is ha or, or have has in place and the intent should be able to appreciate the importance of, for instance, motivating and building successful teams. There needs to be team players. Um, therefore, they need to be shown how to motivate others and how to lead others. And the intent is required to ensure that copies of documents relating to this are included or a report on lesson learned um, during the program or during the this focus area strategic management function so that uh, the mentor signs of that um, those reports around those areas the intent also needs to be exposed to finance and financial management I cannot overemphasize this because uh, for a, a firm or for an estate agency a firm to survive uh, financial management is critical I'm sure we are all in a business to make some money. Therefore, it's very important that intent is exposed in terms of um, cost management strategies, cost containment strategies, general accounting procedures that are followed by the company. How to manage and maintain trust account is very, very important in terms of Estate Agency Affairs Act and the Code of Conduct. And uh, as much as this person is an intern, it's very important that they understand the implications around or the importance of not abusing trust monies. And a report of um, the lessons learned must be compiled by the intern, presented to the principal, and signed off by the principal and all the mentor. The mentor. And the next area is business management or business systems of the estate agency 
that the intent needs to be exposed to, such as finance systems, IT system, purchasing systems, audit processes that are um, followed by the firm, how transactions are recorded, systems and procedures that the company is following in terms of cost-effective ordering and distribution of, of its supplies. The intent needs to be exposed to business systems of the estate agency enterprise. And when I talk business systems, I'm talking finance systems, accounting systems, inventory control systems, cost control systems, budgeting systems, purchasing systems, etc., etc. The intent is required to prepare a consolidated report confirming that they have learned around the business systems of the estate agency company and that they are competent in this area. Copies of such documents, such as the finance systems and purchasing systems, cost management system, etc., may be included as part of the submission within the portfolio of evidence. The administration of the real estate business is one of the areas that the intent needs to be exposed to, and the intent also needs to com compile a consolidated report to confirm that they are competent in this area. It's very important that the intent exits the internship program having a knowledge on how to administer um, profitable real estate business. Therefore, how policies have come about and various procedures that are adopted by the estate agency enterprise needs to be um, exposed to the intent and the intent needs to be given those documents to read and understand how filing system is uh, maintained or created if there is none, personal management systems, how um, other team members are being managed in terms of um, how the appointments are happening, how promotions, if any, are happening, if, if the company promotes people from one position to another or transfer people from one, one area or one business unit to another or one location to another or one branch to another, how skills development levies are managed or, or paid, how UIF and pay, pay SUN are calculated, et cetera, et cetera. These are very, very important areas that the intent needs to be exposed to and compile a report to demonstrate an understanding of such areas. The intent also needs to learn about the marketing and sales strategy of the business um, in terms of how properties or leasing of property or sale of property um, uh, is concluded, or rather um, striking a deal and making sure that the deal is closed at the end of the day. So some of the areas that are required in terms of this area is how uh, one sources properties that they are going to sell, how conversing takes place, and then reporting back to the principal, working as part of the team, how advertising of the company is, 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 is goes about, and how listing of properties is done, et cetera, et cetera, including how to provide an effective after-sales service to all parties involved. The intent must prepare documentation in terms of properties that they've listed or that they've list or that they've sold, um, attendance registers that have been maintained um, during uh, show houses, copies of the marketing plan that they would have adopted to make sure that they ultimately s close the deal, um, marketing pro uh, brochures, um, maybe letters of referrals of, of recommendations because as they service clients i'm sure some of the clients would be very happy to write um, such recommendation letters to the principal or to the mentor 
By the way, they will have close disclosed that they are intense. Therefore, this is very important for them, for their self-esteem as well. Another area that I'm going to touch is what we call paralegal functions of an intern estate agent during the internship program. And uh, the intern needs to undertake some sort of research, um, whether it's legal, economic, or financial um, research, to be able to understand how this industry is functioning and also compile a report around the research that they have conducted. All standard documents that the intern has completed under the mentorship of the mentor should also be included in the portfolio of evidence. And also, they should be exposed on how to liaise with auditors, attorneys, conveyancers, etc., and also a signed off report by the mentor in terms of how the intent has fed, in terms of this area of liaising with other stakeholders to perform their functions. Now I'm going to the maintaining of the logbook. The intern is expected during the course of the 12 months to complete and maintain the logbook, which should include all the activities that I've already highlighted and documentations that I've already indicated per learning area, and those should be signed off by the mentor or the principal. In addition, the logbook serves as a very important educational tracking device. So the intent, um, as they're completing this logbook, they are basically demonstrating that they are understanding various functions, as indicated, those learning areas. And the, that evidence can be used if the intern is uh, or has, has enrolled towards completing the prescribed qualification, which is FETC in real estate, they can use that evidence as part of their portfolio of evidence for qualifying um, against that qualification. So at the conclusion of the internship period, and once all the logbook activities and the PO, POE evidence has, has already been compiled, the, in, the intent and the mentor or the principal must make sure that such a logbook um, and POE is submitted to the EAB. And how we encourage the submission is that it should be done via courier if submitting by yourself to our offices um, cannot be done. We don't encourage um, postage, as we all know, post office strikes, et cetera, et cetera. Hence, we always encourage courier. Or if you do postage, you must do registered mail to submit the logbook. And the EAB will then assess the logbook and provide feedback. Now, what we're doing right now is that we are also in, in the process of implementing what we call e-logbook. And once we are done with that project and we are ready to launch the e-logbook, we will be able to communicate to all affected parties. Then the manual submission and compiling of logbook um, per learning area will fall off. Procedures uh, that are applicable in terms of termination of contracts or practice uh, by parties, it happens that the intern is no longer happy or the intern has to move to another area, region, or province, and then they are still interested to stay within the profession. And yeah, basically transferring from one employer to another. It is um, also happening that the principal wishes to discontinue their practice or they are closing that uh, practice and the internship um, requirement of the intent is affected. And when that happens, 
or should the principal discontinue practicing as an estate agent? Um, it's very important that certain procedures are followed by the principal and the intern to make sure that the intern period, if the 12 months has not yet expired, does not get to be negatively impacted. So should the intern fail to serve the required period of internship in accordance with the 12 month requirement or in, in accordance with the contract of employment with the current employer, they need to um, inform the estate agency at first port when they are moving to another employer. Same as the principal. When the principal wishes to or decides to close the business or cease to operate as a principal estate agent, the estate agency at first board need to be contacted or be informed. If, for instance, the intent um, engages in other functions that are against the contract, then uh, the principal is also entitled to cancel the contract of employment or of internship and dismiss the intent from their service. So just like any normal employment contract, it's very important that for both the intern and the principal and the mentor, um, duly due process is followed and EAB is notified. All right, I'm going to cover procedure for change of principal. In terms of regulation 10 and 12, uh, specific procedures are, must be followed by the intent estate agent and the principal if change has happened. In terms of Regulation 10, the requirement is that each party, either the intent or the principal, must inform the EAB within 14 days of the change in a form of a letter on company letterhead if, if the intent has moved on to the new employer must be on the new employer's letterhead indicating that they have now joined this company and this is a new mentor so that we can update our system. If it's the employer or the principal, the previous principal must indicate and write to the EAB within 14 days on company letterhead to inform the EAB that the intern has left their employ. The requirement is that, in terms of section 12, is that the FFC of the intent should be returned to the EAB um, where the, Im the intent has left the employment of a principal. So the principal must, when um, sending the letter to inform the EAB that the intent has left their employ, also submit the Fidelity Fund Certificate of the intent back to the EAB. The principal is also required to inform the EAB of the reasons why the intent has left the employ of um, or their employment. The procedure to be followed uh, when um, there is a change of principal is continued. As indicated, the employer or the principal all the intern estate agents need to communicate to the EAB when there is a change. And the requirement is 14 days, um, uh, or within 14 days after the change. Now, um, the principal needs to write to the EAB on company letterhead indicating why the intent has, or the whereabouts of the intent, if they have such information. And the principal must return the Fidelity Fund certificate of the intent within the 14 days when they write to the EAB. The intent equally is also required to inform the EAB that they've changed from one employer to another by submitting the new employer's um, um, confirmation of employment on company letterhead signed by the new employer or signed by the new principal and indicating the mentor, the new mentor, 
so that the EAB can update the system and issue a new Fidelity Fund certificate uh, on the new company um, details. I think this covers um, the just the requirements in terms of what needs to be um, submitted, but most importantly, copies of the letters by the intern or the, the letter of the new employer must be included in the logbook. And the new Fidelity Fund certificate that has been issued to the intern um, needs to be included in the logbook when it's submitted to the EAB. I think uh, this really covers my presentation. I hope you have learned something out of this presentation. As per usual, you are required to complete the 10 multiple choice questions regarding this presentation so that we can give you your points, your CPD points. Thank you for listening. Thank you.